Sadhu Sundar Singh, With and Without Christ, Part 6 The Universal Saviour The same difference, I continued, seen between Christians and non-Christians, not only in the West but in the East as well, and thus we have it demonstrated to us practically that Christ is a universal saviour, as there is only one sun that shines in East and West alike. So there is only one light that lights every man coming into the world. People of the East and West are sons of one universal mother, and apart from a few superficial differences, human nature and its needs are the same all the world over. Experience abundantly proves that there is only one who can completely satisfy the needs of all men, and even that is possible only when they live according to his will. Materialism. Then he asked, What do you think of materialism? For Eastern peoples often call us materialists. I said, Neither matter nor any other thing is bad in itself, but the consequence of its misuse is evil. If matter is kept in its proper place, it is all right, but if, in the attempt to satisfy spiritual desires, it is given a place in our hearts, then it takes the place of God deadens our spiritual perception and makes our life as soulless as it is itself. This materialism is found more or less in both East and West. The proper use of matter is that we should use it as is necessary for the upkeep of the house of our soul and use it in moderation. When we exceed the limits of moderation in its use, we relegate the soul to a secondary position and matter to the place of worship and the final result of this is the destruction of our souls. A Maharaja A short time ago, an Indian prince invited me to visit him, and I stayed in his palace for two or three days. He had travelled in Western countries and had, to some extent, been influenced by Western materialism and ways of life, but not to such an extent that he was indifferent to spiritual things. One night he privately told me his story. He said, I thank God daily for the blessings I have received through Jesus Christ, and I also acknowledge my weakness that I cannot confess Christ openly. I know that if I do so, not only my own subjects, but the British government, which is called Christian, would at once remove me from my throne. I can therefore call it only a British, not a Christian government, that cares less about religious duties than it does about political affairs. Of course, I knew that I should think more about my religious duties than about having to give up my rights. As a ruling prince, I ought to be prepared to leave my throne for him who left his heavenly throne for me. I also regret to say that before I visited the so-called Christian countries, I was better spiritually than I am now. I was shocked when I was there and saw the darkness that lies beneath the lamp. Had I known about it, I would never have gone. My real motive in going there was that I might go to the old mother church and drink its pure milk and eat its strengthening food, so that I might return prepared to fulfil my spiritual and state duties. But instead of finding this milk, they gave me liquor and instead of bread, gave me a stone and I returned worse than I was before. There are other things as well, but I don't want to mention them. I do not mean by this that Christianity is a failure, but people have failed to follow it truly, and this refers not only to ordinary people, but to religious and political leaders as well. Now, let us leave it at that. Now pray for me that God may help and guide me, that I may do what I ought to do. This is another incident that gives a challenge and a warning to that Christianity which is without Christ, that it may awake and see how far from the real thing it has fallen. As the Lord said in Revelation 2.5, Remember and repent, or else I will remove your candlestick out of his place. So far, as the Maharaja pointed out, the darkness is beneath the lamp, but if through disobedience and indifference the lamp itself is removed from its place, then how great will that darkness be? Midnight Sun 
In spite of repeated warnings, people remain thoughtless and indifferent and, shutting their eyes to the light, walk in darkness. One summer, when I was in northern Europe, where even at midnight the sun does not set, a Swedish friend wrote to me, We are glad to see you in the land of the midnight sun. I replied, It is true that it is the land of the midnight sun, but in winter it is also the land of the midday night, and there are many in this land who still pass their lives in darkness in spite of the life-giving rays of the sun of righteousness. A Dumb Man Many live their lives like the beasts of the field. They have tongues but no power of speech and are as dumb as animals, with no message for themselves or for others. Animals indeed have tongues but have no ability to speak because they have nothing to talk about beyond some animal feelings which they express by sounds and movements. Those without spiritual life are like animals but in a sense they are worse for the ox knows its owner and the ass its master's crib but man, who is the crown of creation, does not know his creator. Isaiah 1.3 His tongue is very swift to utter falsehood, but is slow to speak truth, because he does not know the Lord his God. Jeremiah 9.3 Cross-bearing We often wonder at the worldly success that we see in the lives of those who have not received the spirit of truth, and neither know him. But then, they are not restrained by any spiritual consideration, and to gain their end, they are at any time prepared to set aside the voice of truth and refuse to follow him. Luke 16, 8, 1 Corinthians 2, 14. Many wore the cross on their necks, though some of them, but by no means all, are little better than Simon the Cyrenian, who carried the cross of Christ because he had to. Mark 15, 21. Such people are willing neither to go to the cross with Christ, nor to follow him daily bearing their cross. The Magnet and the Cross The Lord said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. That is, infinite love revealed on the cross will, like a magnet, draw to it every man that has in him the capacity to be drawn, and his desire is that where he is, there may also his servant be. John twelve twenty six. But as the magnet draws steel, not gold or silver, so the cross, or Christ, draws sinners who truly repent and turn in their need to him, but not those who trust in their own goodness and are satisfied to live without him. Of the two partners of Christ's crucifixion, one repented and in his need turned to him and heard him say, Today you shall be with me in paradise. The other, feeling no need of repentance, did not turn to him for help, and so died in his sin. And this will be the end of all those who die without Christ. They will see Abraham and all the prophets, and they of the east and west and north and south, in the kingdom of God. But they, Christians without Christ, will be thrust out. Luke thirteen, twenty-eight to 29